Revelations 2, Revelation 2 and verse 4 says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Thou hast left thy first love. Thou hast left thy first love. For today, for just a few moments, we're going to share today God's word. We're going to teach on God's word under the subject lesson, Restart. 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 You know how we do it at Union Community. Come on and turn to your neighbor to the left and the right and share with them what is the subject lesson on first Sunday, November. Restart. 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 There's an old principle. There's an old principle. You probably have heard it. If, you, if you've taken music lessons or if you've, if you've uh, been, been accomplished in any, in any gift or developing any of your gifts, you've probably heard an old principle. It says that in order to be a master of any craft, to, to be a master of any uh, instrument, a master of any gifting or any skill, you need to in, in, insert and, and practice no less than 10,000 hours. That's an old principle that says, if you want to be the master of your skill, if you want to be a master piano player, master uh, guitar, or a master drummer, a master uh, uh, football player, or a master cheerleader, or a master uh, uh, educator, or any skill that you want to have, if you want to be a master executive, or a master business owner, uh, the, 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 the elite of the elite, if you want to be a master um, uh, uh, friend, if you want to be the best friend, the BFF of, of ever, then you need a minimum application of practice, a minimum of 10,000 hours. Say 10,000 hours. That's a whole lot of hours. Amen. It says, it says, it, 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 and, and, and many people have studied it, and some say it's not really accurate, but you know what? It makes sense to me. It makes sense to me that, that if you put in and invest 10,000 hours of your life to doing something, you got to be the best of the best. Amen. Now, the problem is that as believers, we seem to de-invest and not invest as much when it comes to our faith walk. We talk about playing the piano or being a sports athlete or, or, or being a, a business person or an educator. We talk about academics and how, how, how much you have to, to, to go to school and study to show thyself approved and, and take the test and get graduated. And be pro we talk about all that, but when it comes to our faith walk, the 10,000 hour mark you would think would be the easiest thing for us to achieve. Because it's a daily walk, it's a daily application, but for believers, too many of us, sadly to say, every day, each and every day, we don't apply God's word in our lives. The wind blows softly in our life, a challenge comes, an obstacle comes, somebody says something uh, nasty or uh, lies on us, and woo, we forget who we are in Christ. We don't apply patience, we don't apply long-suffering, we don't apply forgiveness. The very thing that we, that makes us believers is the very thing that too many of us don't apply. Amen. You see, it matters not, you can hear a sermon all day long, the choir can sing from, from the hills of Montezuma. You can hear God's word all day long, but if you don't apply the principles, it's as if you've heard nothing. So a secular person, I don't even know if he was a believer. Yeah, some man is accredited uh, uh, for, for coming up with this uh, principle and this, this idea. But, 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 but 10,000 hours. I remember when I was in corporate America and had a, you know, I prefer outside being in sales and marketing. But when I had a, a, a nine to five desk job, I would look at the clock. And you could probably relate to this, uh, young people, when you're in school. You might find yourself looking at the clock, wondering when school is going to get out. When is 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock? When is lunchtime? The point is, the more you look at the clock, do you ever realize that, that time goes slower? When you start looking at the clock, it goes slower. The principle is, get to work. Get focused on what you're doing, and the time will zoom by. Why? Because you're not focusing on that. Tick-tock, tick-tock. In the application of God's word, therefore, we must arrive at a mindset that we are going to a 
apply that 10,000 minimum hour principle to our lives. Over and over again, we're going to apply God's word, God's principles to our lives. Mm. Over and over again, oh by the way, that's what restart means. Restart means over and over. Actually, the R-E, the before the start, you got the prefix, it's re. That re is, is from Latin, it means to do over and over, somebody say over. over. And over one more again. Over. over and over again, it's repetitive. It's, it's to repeat the same thing. And when you repeat over and over again, each day when you restart your life, when you, when you get to restart your day, when you get to get up, God's glory being, being and mercy being, being available in you to you each and every day, God's grace being right there with you, you restart your day, it's not that you're restarting the day as far as time and the chronological flow of your life, it's all about you're going to reapply again and again God's love for you, God's principles for you. When you know and repeat to yourself in the morning before you say anything to anybody else, before you text or before you look at your phone to see if you got a text, Man. you're going to declare God's love upon yourself. And repetitively, that's going to sink in. And what will it do? What is the result? What is the reward of declaring God's love on yourself? What is the reward of resetting again and again the God's word on your life, God's love on your life, God's forgiveness of you each and every day? If you do that, what's the reward, you might ask? You will walk confidently out of that door. You will walk and begin your day in a state of confidence, in a state of power. Because when you know your daddy God loves you, your Abba Father loves you, somebody might walk up to you and say, you don't look very good. It doesn't even phase you because at the very minimum, 10,000 times you have said it over your, over your day, over your life, that God loves me. That I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. And what you got to say can't affect me. A-F-F-E-C-T. That's a tangible impact that we can see physically on you, emotionally on you. See, see people talk about the effect, but the effect can be unseen. But the effect is how it affects your walk, how it affects your thinking, how it affects how you react to me. We want you to get to a level of, of maturity in God so that you don't react and get affected in life negatively. We want you to be even keeled. We want you to be balanced in Christ. We want you to be a master believer because at the very minimum, you have restart, restarted and you have a restart button on the application of God's word. Now, we, we, we said that Revelation 2 and 4 is talking about you have left your love, first love. The interesting thing about relationships and love, in my opinion, we don't teach men about love. Oh, unless you think I'm just focusing on the men. We don't teach women about love. Godly love, healthy love, real love. So if neither of us, men or women, know what it really means to love, then how do we show the love? How do we, how do we restart again and again, over and over, showing love when we don't know what it is? Here is what the essence of love is. The essence of love is found in Hebrews chapter 13 and 5, verse 5, and it's found in Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6. The result and the, the reward, the fruit that you see in your life of love is found in this way. I'll just go in the interest of time. I'll read Deuteronomy verse 31, chapter 31, verse 6. It says, be strong and courageous. The Lord your God will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. What is the reward? What is the result? What is the product of, 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 of applying God's word, restarting it again and again into your hearing each and every day? What is the result? What is the fruit? What is the benefit? 
You are a strong believer. You are a, 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 an enduring, you have your endurance built up such that you can withstand the test and the challenges that beset us. When you, when you declare God's love, stronger believer. You become a courageous believer. So in spite of you feeling fear, you're still going to make the choice to press on anyhow. That's what courage is. It's not the absence of, of fear, but it's in the midst, in, the, in spite of your fear, in spite of you feeling uh, uh, self-conscious, in, in spite of you having some low level of self-esteem, in spite of you not feeling you have all of the finances you need to go forward. In, in spite of that lack that you are telling yourself, in spite of that, you trust God more than you fear not having. Yeah. And when you trust God more, when you, when you repeat that and restart that point in your life, you apply that word in your life, you become a stronger and courageous believer. Why? Because you tell yourself over and over again that the Lord God will be with me and he will not leave me nor forsake me. Now you've heard this taught many times, even right here at Union Community. You've heard what that scripture here in Hebrews 13 and 5 that says, I will never leave you or forsake you. You've heard it, it, it spoken in, in, in with many preachers, but, but remember the core of this and I'll leave you with this. That when we talk about restart, we're talking about over and over again, starting the declaration of God's word on your life, such that you can have this result. What is the result that we're talking about? That God will always be with you. He's not going to leave you alone. So when you start feeling lonely, you restart the story that you tell yourself. You restart it by saying, God will never leave me. That, that should cancel out any feelings, amen, of being alone. But if that's not good enough, if, if you feel like you're not alone, amen, amen, and, but, but then you feel like you're being left in a lurch. You feel like your, your mother has turned her back on you or her, your father has turned their back on you. You feel like your friends have rejected you and, 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 and this group and this clique. You know, we talked in previous uh, sermons about how there are even cliques and, and groups and subcategories of, of families and, and, and age brackets, even in a church, even in an organization. Well, all of those have their social customs, their, their, so, their social values, meaning how you operate, how you roll, amen, as a young folk might say. But, but the bottom line is here's the result that we want to have. We want each and every one of you in the hearing of this sermon, we want you to understand the difference between leaving and forsaking. Leaving is, yes, going in a different room, going into another state. But forsaking is so bad. It is so bad. It is an emotional, psychological state of mind that you can be sitting with somebody, but they have forsaken you. They have forsaken your needs. They have forsaken. They have, they, have, they have dismissed that you even have feelings. They have dismissed that you have needs. They have dismissed that, that you have something to say, that you have a valid point to make. They have dismissed. And when someone forsakes you, the danger of not practicing and restarting God's word and God's love on your life, the danger is we will start believing that we're not lovable. So what, when God says, when Christ says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, he's speaking both to the physical man or woman, and he's speaking to the spiritual and the psychological and the, the psyche, emotional, you name it, the social, economic. He's speaking to the whole of you. It's not just words. But all of this being said, all of this word study, all of this exegesis of God's word, simply put, you've got to restart it every day, every moment, every hour. Restart the application of God's word in your life. You will be stronger for it. You'll be courageous for it. You'll be confident. And praise be to God, you'll be better because of it. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace.